Hey everyone, welcome to Nerding IO. I'm JD, and today what we're going to go through is a couple different examples of how to do MCP HTTP streamable connections. We're going to take a look at a client node in React, and then we're also going to look at the back end of how you can set up your own compatible HTTP streamable events. With that, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so MCP came out with SSE a while back, and then they even came out with streamable HTTP. And I've been digging into that, but I also wanted to figure out uh, this example where it's talking about backwards compatibility. And I found that interesting because I already had the SSE examples from before. And so what I want to do is take that same uh, repo and actually update it so that I have the uh, MCP slash, we still have our SSE, and we still have our messages. So we've kind of, we know that there's other transports that kind of adhere to all of this, right? And so this is an example of how we can take the deprecated SSE and go with the more streamable HTTP endpoint, which allows us for stateless applications and things like that, which is super helpful with like NADN. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at this code and basically what we need to go into is our server. So as you can see right here, we still have our SSE, our old uh, transport there, and we have the ability to pull in messages. But now we want to expand this so that we can still use these same tools, but actually use our MCP streamable. Really all we need to do is just add this app.all slash mcp use our streamable uh, handler and then actually pass our server as well as our uh, requests so this http uh, handler that i built is right here so first we're looking to see if it's a post we want to look for our mcp session id we're actually going to then make sure that we, if we don't have a session ID, we're going to random UUID it. We're going to make that into our session generator. We're going to session initialize. And then we're going to actually uh, pass that information as a valid request. If it's already got a session ID, then we're going to actually use the transport that it's already requested and its operation for, SS, uh, for the session ID and then execute or handle the request in that way. If not, we have some error handling here. So based on this, let's go ahead and take a look at the inspector and let's see if we can connect to it. So I already had it uh, connected. We're just gonna go ahead and do a new connection. We can look. So these are the previous resources that we had before, previous resource templates that we've had before, our list of prompts, our tools, so add and search, and we haven't done much with ping or sampling or roots. So we know that we have access to all our tools and we're hitting our MCP endpoint the same as we were hitting the SSE uh, endpoint before. So now let's take a look at what we're gonna do for the front end. So what we're gonna do is this is our previous example. You can see we still have our tools. We can still connect to MCP, but now I wanna make an interactive client. I actually did this, I've been doing this more often where just kind of want to have like a way to visualize what's actually happening on the server and we can give it like different implementations and things like that. So we have our uh, MCP, we can go ahead and connect to that. It's going to let us know what our session is. We can actually do a quick select of tools and we can also see where we're having some conflict errors. We can actually see the session ID that we have available here too. We also have what tools are available. So when we click list tools, the undefined is the description, but we can actually see. We can actually take that tool. If we wanted to do an add, we can just do an add. And we can actually see that it's interfacing. So we're actually adding some uh, custom, custom abilities. We all have our ability to look at prompts. We can actually see this being different kind of coded. And then we can actually do help for a little bit of what is actually going on with all of these things in order to have more of an interactive service. Again, if we wanted to select a tool and go ahead and send another invocation, we can go ahead and 
connect and it's going ahead and calling the tool for adding. So let's take a look at how I actually built the, uh, the interactive client. So basically we still have our interactive clients. We're connecting to our MCP base URL. So this is our backend. Probably do that with like a byte environment variable. But then what we're doing is we're actually using a lot of different, uh, basically like, is there an error or starts with in, in order to do color coding and actually kind of build ourselves our own little console so that we can actually debug and interact with MCP. Again, here's our client. We're initializing based on our session ID. So if we have that session ID, we can actually interact with the client. We've otherwise, create a new, new client. And then we're actually fetching information, pulling back what our session is. Here's our uh, new transport URL. We have our on close as well as our on error. We even have notification handlers. Um, and then finally, we have our connect to our transport. The rest of this is essentially adding like logging and state and things like that so we can actually see what's going on. Again, we have the ability to list out our tools, very similar to what we were doing with uh, Brave Search. And there's also one for, um, for prompts and we can have the ability to disconnect. So we're adding in a lot of functionality on the front end, again, just to make like an interactive client of how we can actually interface with this tool. <clears throat> the next thing that we're gonna do is uh, actually go look at this in any day. And before we do that, I just wanna give a shout out to the community. You know, uh, there's only so much I can put into N8N MCP. And so when you contribute, I truly appreciate it. And uh, this, the HTTP streamable being put into N8N was actually by a contributor. So again, huge thanks to the uh, community. Uh, I know there's more bugs. If more people can help and contribute, it would be super helpful. All right, so now if we go into the MCP uh, in NAN, there's two ways to do this. So understand that in this example, I'm using the N8N MCP client community node, not to be confused with the N8N uh, native MCP client. There's also a way to do that. They, they use SSE as a, a way to to hit that particular endpoint. So in this example, if we want to create an HTTP streamable account for the community node, you go ahead and you click create, and then you can just do MCP. And as you can see, we now have the HTTP streamable API. In this case, I'm just going to point it to the streamable URL of MCP. Uh, again, as before, you, have, you can change um, you know, message posts we don't necessarily need, as well as our additional headers. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at just a basic example. So we have an MCP standalone, which basically has the HTTP streamable account. We're just going to go ahead and list our tools so we can actually see what the schema is that it returns. So we know we have our add, we know we have our search. And then what we're gonna do is we can actually look at this agent. So again, you could connect this to a chat. What I'm doing is I'm just hard coding it, saying searching for MCP. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna list our tools, same as before, and then we're just gonna execute dynamically. So you can see that we're using a streamable. You see that we're using streamable. I am doing the tool name, but we're auto passing the tools to override and basically look at what its uh, parameters are and also define the, uh, don't have to define the tool. So now if we go ahead and run this, it's listing as well as trying to uh, search. And so as part of the search, you can actually see that it was executed and that we got search information back. All right, that's it for us today, everyone. So what we went through is a combination of how you can actually use HTTP streamable events in both the front end client, as well as setting up the back end server. We also took a look at how you can actually connect these in any event. With that, happy nerding.